Hi everyone, welcome back to Williamsport in the warming confines of Lycoming College. From the Corrupt Gateway Center to the Shangri-La Athletic Complex, we miss our Warrior family this fall. Practices have been different, but they have been happening. Our athletes are getting ready for their next chance to take the field, just like all of you did when you were here. We promise they'll be ready when the time comes. Until then, we leave you this. The beginning of a series of interviews with alumni and coaches and their recollections on their time in the blue and gold. We hope you enjoy this small snippet of memories. We also promise our current athletes are continuing to make lasting memories. Thank you for watching and participating in this virtual homecoming. We can't wait to see you again in person. I kind of consider Lyco Athletics as a whole, kind of like the laid the groundwork for my entire college experience. Um, I met some of the greatest people that I've ever met in my life at Lycoming, um, most of who I still speak to this day. And actually, I still talk to four or five of my teammates every single day. Um, and that like literally every single day we talk. Um, I just went to one of their weddings I was at two Lyco weddings in the past two months, and I saw probably 25 other Lyco athletes. Um, but I would say that it's just so family oriented as a community, just because you come in freshman year, no one knows anyone, just like any college experience. But we're kind of lucky in the sense that we already have a community, but we have a community already kind of set for us. Um, and Lyco does a really good job on freshman year kind of housing you with other athletes. So my freshman year, I lived right across the hall from the women's soccer girls and right down the hall from some of the men's soccer players and then men's basketball players. So we kind of all were really lucky in the sense that we had that community before everyone else even gets to campus. Um, we've kind of oddly enough, like form a family within two weeks because we're all going through the struggle of preseason, which is very relatable for anyone who has ever played a sport at Leica or just a college sport in general. Um, because you get to college, you're like, yes, I'm so excited. And then you're in practice for like ever. <laughs> you're dying and you're sore, but it like just brings you closer together because you're all struggling together and no one wants to wake up at 5 a.m. and go running and do workouts, but you do it because, A, you do love it, but you're doing it with your teammates and you motivate each other to get better for the season. Well, uh, certainly the, the top one would be, uh, so 1994, uh, the best year we had had, uh, finished the year 16 and five. And uh, we uh, played Drew University on a Saturday afternoon, a beautiful sunny day. It was one of those things you'll never forget, like all the sights and sounds and smells, right? So uh, wonderful Saturday afternoon on campus, weather was warm, huge crowd at the field, and uh, we beat Drew University to win the first league title. Uh, a few days later, um, the first round of the playoffs on our field, uh, we beat Messiah. So those, those two games right there within about a four or five day time frame, you know, uh, clinching the league championship and then beating Messiah in the first round of the playoffs uh, was certainly something I'll never forget. And as far as a specific play uh, during those games uh, against Messiah, we had taken the lead 1-0 uh, on a great goal by Steve Kramer, who beat two defenders down the right side and just ripped a shot over the goalie's shoulder to the top corner. It was a phenomenal goal. Uh, Messiah came back to tie us 1-1, goes into overtime. About halfway through overtime, uh, we get a free kick about 25 yards out. Uh, and I'll never forget that the coach Eaton was yelling on the field for me to come over to the sideline to tell us what to do. You know, he kind of recognized the moment of, you know, I got to let these guys know what, what is going to work, maybe what's not going to work. So I'm running over the sideline. He goes, just tell Stan to hit it. Right. So Stan Kudelski, uh, uh took the free kick about 25 yards and just ripped it into the top corner of the net uh, for the two to one victory. So um, it was just one of those exciting moments of, you know, the coach knew what we wanted to do. He knew what we could, what, what would work, you know, how can we, how we can be successful in that moment. 
um, called to play and it worked. Uh, so certainly that week was a special week uh, for us as a team. Again, winning the league, first playoff game chance, you know, uh, winning that as well. Um, and then also following up the next year. So senior year, 1995, we won the league again. So kind of back-to-back -back league champions. So it was certainly exciting to go out as a senior, you know, being league champs again. So certainly a special two years. Those are some of the definitely top memories of not only in-game, but then kind of overall just taking that success into the next year and then following up with another league championship was fun. Uh, one is definitely in 1995, we won the MAC championship in softball. Uh, we pretty much went in as the underdog. I don't think anybody uh, could foresee us beating, taking out Messiah. Um, so, but we did, we had to come back and beat him twice, which we did uh, to win the uh, MAC championship. And I think we did it with, I mean, we had some veteran players, but we also had, like I was a freshman, uh, Mary Bish Windenhammer was a sophomore. Um, so we, you know, we kind of dominated with the pitching there and uh, you know, with a young crew, I think. And then as far as basketball, uh, probably my most memorable year was my junior year. We went undefeated at home and uh, Lock Haven came into Lomity and we knocked them off. And it, it's kind of funny. Uh, I coach uh, my daughter's softball team right now and we we're at a tournament uh, over the summer and Coach Scarfa was there. who was the coach at Lock Haven at the time. And he stopped me and he was like, hey, what, what's your name? And uh, he remembered that. And I was like, yeah, you came to Lycoming and we won. <laughs> so that was, that was definitely a memorable, memorable uh, year. Well, unfortunately, because I, I, I feel like uh, I'm, I'm talking about myself, but my favorite memories probably come from a couple of plays that I made during the course of, of my career. Um, in my, uh, senior year I became the punt returner I, and primarily because we had some really good backs that couldn't catch the ball couldn't hold on to the ball and all coach Girardi won it back there was somebody who could catch the ball and I loved doing that and uh, so they, they made me the punt returner and uh, we were playing we were playing Wilkes we played in a pouring rainstorm at the Wilkes field it was muddy it was wet uh, fourth quarter uh, we're down two scores and we put on the pump block. And so the pump block is on, I feel the punt and I take off. And I go 64 yards for a touchdown. And uh, Coach Girardi says to me after the game, we lost the game. I was, I was, I didn't like losing. I was devastated when we lost the game. Coach Girardi said to me after the game, the best open field run he had ever seen. Because bear in mind, we weren't setting up any kind of return. And after that, they let me return the ball. So fast forward to a couple weeks later and against um, uh, Uppsala, which no longer exists. And I got a football here. I can't, may not show up that well, but it's got the score. Lycoming 20 and Uppsala 14. We were down 14-13 in the fourth quarter. And I returned a punt for a touchdown for the win and score. And Peter Honorati, did this now the, the ball has been used by lots of kids over the years and it's it's no longer uh, whole uh, but it's something that I cherish uh, cherish having so those are a couple of on the field uh, uh, things that I remember well I mean they're all pretty great there's something really special to me about um, our soccer field at like homing like being on the turf in the like in the fall when the leaves start to change and just that the feeling of fall and just like playing soccer in general was just the best and you know once you're out of preseason and you're into your regular season like games pick up pretty quickly and you're just you know practices you're still practicing but it's not the same level and you're just playing game after game but i guess one of my <laughs> A good memory I have is um, it was my senior year and it was our opening tournament. I believe it was at Susquehanna University, which sorry, I had to say that awful university, but um, we were playing our first game and I had, I think I had scored the first goal. I don't exactly remember when it was, but everyone started kind of like 
freaking out. And I looked over and it was um, Coach Baldwino and he was like yelling at me that I needed to get the ball. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, you just broke a record. And I was like, I did what? So I like, remember we were uh, trying to chase around and get this soccer ball and like explain to the other team that we needed to keep it because, and it was, it was quite a mess, but yeah. I think I ended up getting it, but we had, I had no idea that that was gonna happen. Um, so I think Coach Joe thought that was a really nice surprise, but I was, but I was pretty confused at the same time. <laughs>in 1969 in the history department and I was always interested in athletics. I was an athlete in college, cross country track and swimming and not the best combination maybe but I ended up dropping swimming and focusing on cross country and track. So when I came to Lake Cumming I tried to follow the athletic program. The team sports uh, played in many of them played in the old gym which was not quite legal basketball length and which seemed to give us some advantage uh, over some other teams so uh, I found it interesting I to go there uh, my wife and I we took our children and I took our children to football games as well uh, there were very few sports for women. And uh, in the 70s, when that became a, an issue, um, I was good friends with Deb Holmes uh, in the athletic department. I know she was responsible for starting a couple of programs. Uh, she was tennis coach and she started the women's basketball program even though she agreed that basketball was not necessarily her forte, uh, she was a coach. And so she established the program. I'm not sure the exact reason or motivation, but in 1981, uh, I visited uh, Dutch Birch, who was in the athletic director. And I said, look, I've been a runner uh, most of my adult life. Uh, I think we could use a cross-country team at Lake Cumming. And he said, well, uh, new sports and were difficult. They had to begin in a club basis. And he didn't know whether we could afford it. And I said, I hope you understand, I'm volunteering. Now, I do not want to be paid as coach. And he said, well, um, is there anything else that's on your mind about cross country? And I said, well, it will have to be co-education. I said, there'll have to be a woman's team as well as a men's team. And we had some discussion about that. I think uh, Coach Birch was not, Athletic Director Birch, was, was not as, uh, had not planned for that, let me put it that way. But he was willing, and so in the fall of 1982, uh, we had a cross-country team, club status, at least for the first year, for both men and women. And I literally walked around campus, stopped people on uh, going into the Word Center, uh, talked to my students in class, recruiting runners. And so uh, it was just one of those things. One of the early runners, um, uh, Amy Elder, was a star of the women's basketball team, a very tall player, but a very good runner. And so uh, we put together a team. I looked recently at the records. We did not do well. As I recall, we did not win any that first year, either men or women, but uh, they seemed to have a good time, and I remained coach for uh, the next four years, seasons 82 to, through 86. And then uh, my wife was nominated for a political office in the state, and an election was called suddenly due to the death of the incumbent from this district. And 
I turned the cross-country program over to Jim Burton. 